if I'm a software company, a developer, whatever, you know, I own a software, I develop, I've heard a lot about the threat to development as it relates to AI and what's coming. This idea and concept of you really don't need a room of developers to build a software. You don't need to, you know, it's gonna be so smart that it'll just, you know, create a software for you. It seems so far-fetched knowing development and it seems so far away as well. But talking about the software itself and what's possible within a software. So I'm a software provider offering software to businesses, to merchants. Um, what is it that we should be looking for in the future? What opportunities do we have as well, right? It's kind of the SWAT concept of sure. strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we're looking at kind of the back half, opportunities and threats, because we can't control those things necessarily. Although we could take an opportunity and say, hey, we should start to do this now or start to work on this now. What are you seeing there from the software perspective and what they should be focusing on? I mean, the biggest thing that people don't necessarily realize is, you know, the intellectual property component of what the um, you know, AI is doing now from a generative perspective. Yeah. You know, there's court cases out there that have been already ruled on that says anything created by generative AI can't be copyrighted. Interesting. So, you know, so that, like literally you get it from generative AI, you can't copyright it, which I would assume puts a little bit of a threat to people utilizing the generative AI because now they lose their protection yeah, under so, the law. Okay. So if you just use like ChatGPT, you go to the OpenAI website and try to use it to generate code, you can, and it works. And I mean, it, from what I've heard from, um, you know, some of the people that I know is it, it helps them out quite um, to, I'll say speed up development a lot. The challenge though that comes with it is you're asking a model that's being used by everybody and you're feeding it data. And every time you feed it data, that becomes part of the brain. And it's not just Kevin's like slice of it. You know, next time you go on and you type in the same question I did, it's gonna know that I like the answer and probably give you something similar. Right. So now I've lost a little bit of my edge, if you will, in my opinion, uh, for you know what can be creative. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's the other component of it as well. Uh, I know GitHub, which is a, a platform that people use to check their code in has services that say they protect against that, but it still comes back to, in my opinion, intellectual property is a big deal. Now, if you write software and it's a service, is anybody really going to get a copy of it? No, because it's in your like within your organization. But if you have a bad actor internally and you have an employee that leaves, and all of your code was generated by AI, and they just go stand up the same competitor next door to you with a new name and start selling it, you have no recourse. Interesting. Because you can't claim copyright on the code because it was written by AI. Very interesting. And that's gonna be an interesting world because not just with code, we talked about papers earlier in the college sure. student concept of who actually wrote this and how can yeah. you identify. So now a new company comes up that's gonna be the ones that stop that from happening, right? And sure. and and you know, there's this is where I think there's this delicate dance of governing this with restricting the ability versus the moral side of, you know, those that are trying to be back bad actors and how do you stop those folks from damaging something good, right? One one bad apple ruins a bunch is, is I one mean, of the problems. I definitely think there's gonna be some legislation that will probably change the rules. Right. You know, it's even from an intellectual property standpoint, I don't think that's gonna last. I, I do believe at some point in the future, because if you think about all the big tech companies out there and the influence they have, you know, from a government perspective as well, I think everyone would support probably changing that law, which is, right. you know, one of the beauties of what we can do here in the country yeah. is if you know technology is changing, they can just rewrite the law quite literally and get it through. And now, hey, maybe my intellectual property is protected. But you know, as you know, like this is so new, it's going to take some time to catch up. That's right. Yeah, people are going to have to trip a bunch of times, mm -hmm. and a lot of those uh, early adopters probably get you know b big reward, of course, sure. but also big risk is often what we see in those situations. Sure.